Hello my lovely friends, it's Rebecca from Hedgerow Stitching. I'm sorry I've been away for a little while, it was unexpected, but I'm back today and want to say hello, uh, thank you for purchasing any of my charts or looking at my website. Um, I'm very grateful for anyone who looks at that. I'm so pleased to be re reproducing patterns and also um, connecting with all you lovely people in the stitchy world. So welcome, I hope you've had um, a lovely holiday. I've got a few things to show you this morning and uh, a little bit of progress on some of the stitching I've been doing. So let's jump right in. I think the last video I did was a release of one of my charts. I can't remember which one it was, but I think since then I've done a little small red work one. So if you like red samplers, there's a little small one on my website, which is available for you. Um, the first sampler I'd like to show you is this colorful sampler by Amelia Cowan. And she stitched this at age eight and finished it in November 1859. Now Amelia's uh, sampler is only a small sampler and this is my reproduction. I did it on 40 count uh, lakeside linen so it makes it a lot smaller. It's a very quick stitch. It's only a tiny sampler but she's got a huge family history. Amelia was very well connected in the 1800s. Her, both her families were military families and um, she also has a very uh, weak, I would say, tenuous um, link to Jane Austen's family. So if you like Jane Austen and you want to hear about the link that this sampler has with Jane Austen, um, perhaps you would uh, consider stitching it. Um, she was born in India, Bengal, to uh, a military family and she had lots of, I think she was one of eight children, lots of brothers and sisters. They lived in India for quite some time, um, moving to Malta and then settling in Portsea in Portsmouth in Hampshire, um, which was a very, uh, which was a naval port. So uh, she was connected with all the families around there. Um, Amelia didn't marry and she died a spinster and there's details of her will um, in the in the um, download PDF download so that's um, Amelia Cowan she's very pretty I stitched her in uh, Verisoir 103 and there's a DMC conversion as well I used the colors on the back because they're just as bright as the colors on the front or maybe a bit brighter um, so that's a very sweet little sampler the next one I'm working on, I have charted, but um, I'm still stitching it at the moment. Um, because I was away in November, um, I took stitching with me and a couple of uh, projects. But of course, I didn't put one single stitch in any of my projects while I was away because I was so busy. Um, so unfortunately, I'm a little bit behind on my schedule. Uh, this next sampler is a Scottish sampler and it's stitched by a girl called Janet Purves and it she finished her sampler in 1808. So this is the original. Whoops. Um, red and green, so the green is very faded now and she actually used two, uh, some pink here or a very pale red. She's got um, a lot of violet stitches um, some four-sided stitch and um, some crowns along the bottom here and the only tiny bit of over one she stitched her name in over one and the date the month in over one and oh there's rice stitch as well so this is a lovely original Scottish sampler I'll show you my progress so far, let's take the pins off here. I hope you all had a good holiday or having a good holiday. And um, we spent our holiday with family and it was lovely. So um, I'm very grateful for my family and my good friends. Um, so this is my progress so far. I'm stitching it on, I think this is Foxtail Millet by Legacy Linen. 
and it's 40 count. Sorry, I've scrolled up here so you can't really see the top of the sampler. Um, but it's as tight as a drum. I love legacy linens and I've kept come down the side here to make sure I've got my counting correct. I've just finished the row of crowns here and I will go back and finish the eyelet stitches along here. I'm using um, the eight leg eyelets in the green and then in the pink down here, I'm going to use the 16 eyelets because that's what she's done on her sampler. So Janet Purves from Scotland, she will be ready um, for purchase in the next couple of months. And she's a beautiful Scottish sampler, but I'll show you, I'll do a video and show you her when she's actually finished. But she's on 40 count legacy linen. Um, I also recently bought a new sampler and it lends itself to Christmas, although it's not a Christmas sampler. But I was a little bit late in um, attempting or thinking about um, reproducing her for this Christmas. So this is something that I will do for next year. Um, and this is um, Charlotte White House, age eight again in 1826. And this is her little sampler. Quite a dark sampler. Um, I've not attempted to clean it at all. I've just taken it out of its frame. It came a little bit battered. It's got some ghost stitching here, which I think was a pale, a pale blue. Um, I haven't really uh, sort of studied this sampler very much. She's got a, a crown here, a couple of dogs on each corner, some lovely trees and a gorgeous colorful basket down at the bottom. So it does, not Christmas, but lends itself to Christmas. So this is another sampler, Charlotte, I'll be reproducing at some stage. I don't reproduce all the samplers I have. Um, there's there's some of them that are slightly more intense than others. And that's something that I will do later on when I'm more, uh, have done it a little bit more often than, than just starting out at the moment. So stitching wise, apart from doing those um, models, I've been stitching along on Anne Grimshaw with everybody else on the stitch along. I started Anne on Russian tea cake from Legacy Linen, but I wanted to use um, 103 silk on it. And um, I think the, the Russian tea cake is 38 count and I didn't really like the coverage very much. So um, I changed my fabric and I know how difficult it is to get fabric at the moment. So I actually pinched a piece of fabric from another project that I hadn't started. I had just kitted up and this is a piece of Lake, Lakeside uh, vintage exemplar in 40 count. So this is the progress I've got so far and I am um, 40 count, but I changed back to using the Avera Soir, um silk not the 103, which is what I intended to stitch it in. Um, so this is what I've got so far, but this fabric is lovely. It's beautifully dyed and it fits nicely on my really big um, Amarnik frame. So that's as far as I've got with my Anne Grimshaw and I've been wanting to sti the, stitch this one for years. Oops, I didn't have the chart, so um, it was on my wish list. And of course, when I went to purchase it, it had sold out. So I had to wait quite a while for it, but I managed to get it um, anyway. Um, what else have I been stitching on? Oh, yes, I started. What, what have I done with it? Uh, oh, it's down here, sorry. I started um, The Old Scot with my lovely friend Susan, Susan Stanley, and we're stitching this together uh, with some other people. If you use the hash, Susan's got a hashtag for this. Um, I'm sure she'll share that. She's shared that in her videos. And I'm stitching this on... Spygart, oh, I'm not quite sure. I'll have to look it up in my diary, but this is as far as I've got. So I'm starting in the top left-hand corner and I'm just pulling threads from my stash. I didn't have all the silks. I've got a couple of the silks, but um, I'm pulling uh, the threads that I've got and going along with it. 
I've darkened it up a bit by using a darker fabric. But that's as far as I've got with that one. So I want to get back to that shortly because I know Susan will be zooming ahead on that with me. So next time we zoom, I'm sure she's done loads. Um, I picked up a couple of charts recently. Um, I didn't get round to, I'm not very good at stitch alongs, but I picked up the Ellen Norris chart from GGR. I love GGR charts. I think they're fabulous. And also Mary Griffiths. I have yet to kit these up, so um, I'm looking out for fabric for those. Um, I purchased a few uh, different fabrics for making project bags with. Um, this was one of the fabrics. And so this for the outside of the bag and this for the inside of the bag. And I think these ones are, um, what are they called? Oh, I'll leave it down below what they've called. I'm not quite sure what they are. And then I picked up this piece of fabric from Etsy, which has all sewing implements and bits and pieces on. Um, it's printed in French. So that was a nice piece of fabric to get just for probably pin keeps and things like that. So I picked up those two things. Um, I picked up some fabric. Um, let me have a look. Okay, uh, last year I put in um, an order for some fabrics from Traditional Stitches and it was at the time when um, there, were, there were delays, so they're just coming through at the moment. And this is a piece of wood smoke. That's the colour of wood smoke. Gorgeous colour, absolutely gorgeous. So that's that colour, wood smoke, and that's 40 count. And then the other piece from them came, and just the other day actually, um, Mayflower Mocha. I had heard lots of people talk about Mayflower Mocha and I hadn't um, seen any myself. So that's the colour up against the wood smoke. It's nearly the same colour as my, my jumper today. So they're my two pieces of um, traditional stitches, lakeside. Oh no, sorry, this is an R&R. &R. This is a lakeside linens, wood smoke. And this is Mayflower Mocha R&R uh, &R reproductions. Get those right. And then my friend um, told me that she had started stitching on 56 count linen and I thought, well, I don't want to be at a party pooper and not join in. So I ordered two pieces of linen. This is 56 count cafe au lait. Uh, let me get this right. So I got, um, so I got cafe au lait 56 count and I got these from Hobby House Needleworks. There, uh, unless I'm mistaken, I don't think there's anywhere I can buy 56 count linen in, in the UK, but if somebody knows somewhere that does sell it, um, if you could let me know, I'd be very grateful. Um, and this piece is, I'll put them two together. This piece is a 56 count cream. So cream and cafe au lait. Sorry, did I say coffee au lait? Cafe au lait and cream. And I'm going to get some Suasafine to stitch on this. I might try the 103, but I think it may be a little bit too thick. Um, and also uh, my friend recommended um, the Tudor silks from Gloriana, um, another silk that you can't get in the UK. Um, I think there's a Gloriana embroiderer stockist in London, but I've asked her and I'm not sure if she can get hold of it for me. Anyway, so that's Tudor Silk and 56 Count Linen. Um, I think there was one, I did contact Zygart's head office in Germany and there was one stockist who did do um, the higher counts, but not in the, in the hand-eye colours that I was looking for. So those are my 
pieces of fabric I'm going to add to my stash. Um, the only other things I've got to share, are, uh, it was a book that I bought myself for Christmas. Um, I only got it for Christmas Day and I've already read half of it. And this is a recommendation from a dear friend and it's a book by Margot Mifflin, Mifflin, sorry, and it's The Blue Tattoo, um, the story about Olive Oatman. Uh, it was so interesting and captivating, I just couldn't put it down. So that was my first day of reading it. I think I'm going to finish it pretty soon. But if you are interested in this era, 1850s, 1800s, um, it's a lovely book to read. Not lovely, I mean, it's very interesting. And the only other thing I've got to share is a little bit of knitting. Um, I was away in November and I had to travel to Norwich, which is about eight hours from us, six to eight hours driving. And they're in Norwich Castle, obviously they have all the Norfolk samplers, but unfortunately um, the access to them for research purposes was closed due to the pandemic. So they did have um, a few samplers in their uh, normal castle exhibition. So I'll put a few photographs on at the end of this video of the things that I was able to see. And um, unfortunately, it was a, um, a family crisis. So I found that stitching was um, too much for me at that time. So I took up my knitting again and I have I am um, available on Ravelry as Hedro Stitching, so if you want to um, hop over there and see the things I've done in the past. But um, so I picked up uh, what's called the 100 acre shawl pattern, and it's just a simple lace pattern shawl. Starts off with a, a darker colour, mutates to a pinky colour, and then ends with green. So I've used Madeleine Tosh Aubergine. Uh, and then uh, a pale greeny pinky grey colour and then I'm just on the pale green and these are Tosh and um, I think Old Maiden or Aunt Maiden and then it finishes off with the darker green and it's been really soothing to do this um, and count, uh, but you have to count a lot obviously and um, this is as far as I've got. So I've been um, doing my little bit of shawl knitting. That's the lace pattern on it. And also I've been updating my Ravelry favourites with looking at socks and things like that because anyone who knits, I'm sure, knits socks during the winter time. Okay, everybody, I think that's all I've got for you today. And I'll tack on some photographs on the end of this video of the things I saw at the museum. And I will catch up with you very shortly. So um, I'm really pleased to have come and done a video today and got back in touch with everybody. Um, and I love to read all your comments and I do read them all and try to respond with an acknowledgement. Um, Thank you to all my subscribers, people who hang on and wait for me to upload a video. If you are a watcher and you're not a subscriber, do think about clicking the subscribe button and supporting floss tubers in this community. Um, thank you to everybody who sent me floss cards. Um, I did a, a run print run of my own and um, I ran out of them really quickly and then sort of life things took over so I never got round to repeating them but thank you to everybody who sent me floss cards they're very welcome and um, so I will see you all again another time okay take care everybody bye bye